For Krima Media in Johannesburg, this is Sane Zamini. Joining me today is Tabon Lela to discuss his book titled, Will Yourself to Your Destiny. Can you briefly tell uh, our viewers about your dreams that were almost shattered uh, before you were almost killed? Yeah, it's a long, it's a long journey. Um, as a young boy, I've always like had big ambitions. I was always an outdoor um, young boy. I played a lot of sports, um, but uh, growing up, I didn't grow up like um, normal other kids. You know, um, at home we were very, very extremely poor from a very young age. I started rolling my sleeves up and and trying to assist my two ladies, my mom and my granny. Mm-hmm. By, um, by working in the taxis and, and, and as a scrapper boy and washing taxis on weekends when I didn't go to school, on weekends and on public holidays. So that's, that was from, from the age 13. Mm. So yeah, I, I didn't have a normal childhood. Mm. And can you briefly now tell our viewers how you ended up in a wheelchair at the age of 18? When I was 18, there was a, um, a gang of criminals that uh, came into my neighbor's house, an auntie who lived there. Mm. And when I, heard, when I heard screams, I was a young boy, didn't know much about what I was doing. About the, okay, I knew a bit about the dangers and the risk, but mm. I couldn't just sit by and when, when, when an auntie uh, next door neighbor was, was screaming. So I went there to try and assist and I got shot. The bullets mm. got stuck in my spine mm. up to today. So mm. that, that first incident landed, landed me on the wheelchair. And in the book, uh, Tabo, you write about the push, which you say um, when we are going through something, we have to look for the push. What is that push and why is it important? It's important because without that push, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have all the things that I've achieved. Um, most of them are still work in progress because I still want to achieve uh, much more. But it's all with the push mm. that's made me to be Day. When I first got shot, I stayed at home in that one-room shack with my granny for two years mm. because I was afraid to go out to see the world and, and, and I, I, I depended on disability grants. Mm. But then after the two years, I said, no, I need a push. I need something that's going to push me and, 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 and a drive to the life that I've always imagined. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, back inside, without the push, I wouldn't be here. So I pushed myself. I went back to school, matriculated top 10 in the province. Mm-hmm. I went to higher institution. You know, it was always the push. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and that push is actually literally because mm-hmm. I had to push myself for kilometers for about like 10 kilometers mm-hmm. from a taxi rank to push myself. Yeah. In and it was mm-hmm. devastating when it was raining because mm-hmm. I'd get to the taxi rank and people wouldn't even want to climb on the taxi next to me mm. because now I was so in the wheelchair. But I, I still pushed myself to school. Mm. I didn't give up with all the chances. Now, for the people who are not familiar with where you grew up uh, in Inanda, in Deben, for us as journalists, we know that it's a very dangerous place and it's always mentioned when our government is in, is um, talking about the crimes that what, what do you remember growing up in, in that township? That place is dangerous, it's deprived, it's the worst you can ever think of. Mm. Um, But I I still love it because it's my hometown, it's Mm. where I grew up. Mm. I think it made me to be the humble person who I am Mm. today. It's made me realize growing in that poverty, in that space, it made me want to go back and, and try and make a difference. When I read the history of that place, most let's say we need urban mayors, they come from the even the current mayor mm. is from there, uh, near my home, Honorable Policy Kaunde. And we're working on projects with him now to, to help the community. That, that's why I'm I'm saying I'll always be proud to be from there, even though it's not a, a great place to raise to raise kids, mm. but 
Um, we didn't, I didn't turn out so bad. The mayors didn't turn out so bad. We focused on the positive. I think we can do a lot of change. You pushed yourself, as you have just told us. What is it that uh, you can share with our viewers that uh, is something that has always been in your mind to make things uh, better for yourself as well as your family? I think as a young kid, I've always knew that I was going to be successful. I've never, ever in my mind, not once doubted it. I didn't know how I was going to do it, mm -hmm. but I knew it will come with hard work. Mm -hmm. And when at, at home, I didn't even have a TV. Within that two years I spent in solitary confinement in that one room shack. Sisonke, the legacy mm -hmm. where you are working with now, uh, Deben Mayor, to make things right in, in your city, in Deben. Can you briefly share what is happening in Deben? There is a uh, effect Deben Rocks um, <laughs> next week. So Empire Cafe, there's an Empire Cafe in Devonport where my book is available mm -hmm. uh, for sale. It's mm -hmm. a restaurant in Devonport. Uh, my brother owns the, 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 the restaurant. So DJ Tira is doing an exhibition there mm -hmm. for effects Deben Rocks. We'll be giving out tickets and I'll be giving out sanitary pads. What lessons did you learn while you were trying to recover in the hospital? You see, with the push, when I say uh, you, you need, we need that push, we need to wheel ourselves to our destiny. Mm. There are going to come uh, at times and challenges where you get stuck. Mm. But it's not the end of the road. It's not the end of the life. If you're still breathing, if you're still alive, mm. you must be patient. Give it time to heal. Mm. Maybe it's a process. You know, everything has a time. I didn't just wake up and work for Transnet as I'm working for Transnet today. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I struggled for five years to find employment. Being a good student still with good uh, um, qualifications, but I still struggled because most companies, they wanted experience mm -hmm. or they want wheelchair friendly. So I always had challenges. So I, I had to be patient. That's, 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 that's where I, I learned to say, Okay, everything has its time. Mm. You know, God opens doors when it's your time. We cannot finish the interview without speaking about these two women that were so influential in your life, your mom and your grandmother. What can you say about those women? They are phenomenal. Well, without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm. I'm sure I would have given up. I know the, 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 that they are very strong. They taught me to be strong, mm -hmm. especially my mom. The things she's been through um i think i learned from a young age you know we, we, we used to go sometimes for days without food mm. and i would see the pain in her eyes but i had to be strong even though i was a young boy i had to be strong so i i i, I learned to be strong from her mm -hmm. you know, she taught me how to be strong and how to survive and how to work hard because she's a hard worker she's mm -hmm. always told me that if you work hard there's only one guaranteed outcome if you work a hard worker, if you work hard, the only guarantee is that you're going to succeed. There was Tabon Lela in conversation with Quality about his book titled Will Yourself to Your Destiny.